Spooky Stories audiobook number one. Encounter with a Strange Being. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I've got a story for you that I think would be right up your alley. It's the scariest thing that ever happened to me. And for years I was too weirded out by it to want to share it. Once I started to tell people though, I was surprised at how many were genuinely interested and some even had their own experiences with this kind of a creature in the night. Some of their stories are a lot scarier than mine, in fact. Some of them are terrifying. I would classify my experience as being very spooky, though. Now, my parents still live in that little town, so I'm not going to name it, but there is a lovely place in northeastern Wisconsin that's about as close to heaven as you can get down here on Earth. I used to live in a nice two-story home with an attic and a basement, and I'd walk about 10 minutes through the woods in the back to get to my best friend's house to watch TV, since his mother had laxer TV rules than mine. I'd usually bring my little yappy terrier Buster with me. My dad named him Buster because he barked so loud that dad was afraid he was going to Buster Blood Vessel. That was Buster's full name, for you completists out there. So, one Saturday, my best friend and I were watching scary movies on TV, and then it came time for me and Buster to walk home through those beautiful woods. Except, all of a sudden, I looked at those woods I loved so much. And after those spooky movies, the entire scene looked so terrifying and menacing. I actually thought about going in and calling my parents to ask them to come pick me up, but I didn't think that would go over too well. As scary as those dark trees suddenly seemed, I was going to have to be mature about it and just do what I had to do. I stepped under the canopy of trees, my tiny dog trotting close to my heels. The early evening air was thick with humidity, and the distant rumble of thunder whispered through the trees. As we walked deeper into the forest, the trees tangled together overhead, casting the woods into a murky world of shadows. The sudden bark of a howl sent shivers down my spine, it made me glance nervously around me. Then, a rustling sound from nearby and a dark form appeared. It stood tall on two legs, its canine head raised to the sky, and its eyes glowing amber in the dim light. It was a dogman, or a werewolf? The creature moved with a fluid grace as it walked through the woods on two legs like a man even though this clearly was not a man. I genuinely felt that I was looking upon a magical scene. It reminded me of those scenes in the old original black and white King Kong, where the humans in the foreground react to the monsters in the background. I found out they did that using rear screen projection, with the actors standing in front of a movie of the monsters. Even so, I couldn't figure out how the special effects I was looking at were done. This looked just as magical as King Kong, but this was real, and it was happening right in front of me. I apologize to those of you who think of Dogman as a normal animal, but I've seen a bear, and I've seen coyotes in the wild, and I was blown away both times, but in neither of those instances did all of my hair stand on end, like what happened when I saw that Dogman walking upright through those woods. It looked like a god or something from ancient mythology, it really did. I mean, it was something to see. I felt so in awe, but I also felt a deep sense of dread and foreboding. That creature was clearly powerful in more than just the obvious physical ways. There was a presence to it that I had never witnessed in my real life before. This was not just an ordinary animal, and I held still as I watched it move, praying that it would keep going and not notice me. But unfortunately, my little Buster noticed it. Barking at the top of his tiny lungs, Buster charged off through some bushes and passes way too small for me. And he was heading straight at that monster man with the canine head. Now the dog man stopped and turned, looking at the bushes and trying to find the source of that yapping and growling and fussing. I thought I was gonna faint but I realized I had to somehow get to Buster before that dog man did. All of a sudden, 
when I knew he was running his way towards certain doom. All I could think of was every cute thing that precious little pup ever did. I could see him playing with the first toy I got him. I remember the first time I got to feed him. And so I had tears in my eyes as I ran around, trying to make shortcuts inside the shortcuts and get to my little boy in time to save his life. I came around a tree and lost balance on my nervous legs, falling sideways to the ground directly in front of a small clearing in which I could see my little boy in the home stretch of his race toward the dogman. Panic seized my heart as my poor little dog wagged his tail and bounded toward the beast man. I couldn't move, as I had been winded in the fall. I couldn't speak, as I gasped for air to refill my lungs, and fear burned in my chest. But as they approached each other, the wild predator bent down and picked up my dog, holding him gently in his massive hands. Buster whined and licked the dogman all over his face as though they were old buddies. Suddenly the storm broke overhead and heavy rain pounded onto the forest floor as lightning illuminated the creature in a ghoulish light. Its fur was matted with rain and straggling strands of hair, and yet it appeared more human somehow in the rain and thunder. There seemed to be a strange kind of awareness emanating from this beast. It was almost as though it were trying to communicate with me, using its eyes and movements to show me its peaceful nature. By this time, I had stepped a little closer, my heart still pounding in my chest. The friendly dogman made no move to harm me or my dog, appearing instead to be something of a guardian. Then, with a gentle movement, it handed me my dog back. The shock had sort of numbed all the tension out of my body at that point, so I wasn't as scared as I would have been before. With a friendly wave of its hand-like paw, the dogman turned and disappeared into the storm, leaving me and my dog alone in the dark forest. It wasn't until later, when I emerged from the forest, that I realized what a bizarre and surreal experience I had just survived. I must have imagined all of it, or at least that's what I tell myself even today. All that's left is a feeling, like a half-remembered dream, of a strange, friendly animal being that crossed my path in the midst of a thunderstorm and then walked off, never to return. Story number two. Dogman in the Old Mansion. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I used to enjoy visiting the Old Mansion until the time we found something inside that wasn't happy to see us. This is a Dogman story. Let me tell you about it. When I was a kid, my dad always urged us to be good to our rich relatives. This resulted in us getting a lot of little jobs from them, but none of them ever left us any inheritance or anything. One of the little gigs we had was to check up on our rich Uncle Rich's northern estate as he would fly south each summer. Initially, the job was my father's, but eventually it fell to his stepson, my half-brother Sam, who was a full 10 years older than I was, but who always treated me really well and was almost a second father figure to me when I was growing up. I was like 13 when we started doing the trips out to the mansion together, but this story happened when I was, I guess, probably 15 maybe. My brother was about to get married and start working his first serious job, so I think this was his last trip out there. I know it was mine, as I refused to have anything to do with that place anymore unless all the servants were back to make sure no man-eating cryptids happened to stroll in. Generally, when Sam and I would show up, we'd get something out of the freezer to microwave for lunch. Then we'd go about checking the house and grounds to make sure everything was okay. We would make a checklist, then call our uncle on whatever phone number he had left this time, and we'd go down the checklist with him. Sometimes he'd have additional jobs he'd need us to do at that point, but... Otherwise, we'd grab some food for the road and head on back. One day it was sunny and we threw a football around for a while before heading back, but usually that was about it. This time, when we showed up, the service entrance had been broken into and some various objects were missing from inside the place. We called our uncle and I stayed on the phone while Sam ran around checking different rooms that my uncle had various valuable items stored in. 
It seemed that some items from the ground floor had been removed, but nothing from upstairs. The lock on the attic door was undisturbed, so we knew that was okay. And there was probably nothing valuable in the basement, so we didn't even check there. It seemed that whoever had been there was now gone. The police came out, and by the time they were done acting bored and telling us we'd never see any of these items again, it was dark out. We wanted to head on home, as it was going to be really late before we got there. A rich Uncle Rich, though, he wanted us to check the basement before we left. I objected to this. It was night, and the police were gone. Why didn't he ask the police to check the dark, scary basement? Why did we have to do it? I was so worn out. I was really getting sick of my rich Uncle Rich, and I basically told him that, too. He didn't care, and he said one of us or the other was going to have to check that basement before he would allow us to leave. Well, Sam was in his mid-twenties, so he had no choice but to volunteer to check the basement. Of course, the light switch was busted, meaning it was pitch dark down there. I went and got him the flashlight, and he started doing some deep breathing to try to calm himself down. I could tell he was as scared of that basement as I was. The two of us were standing there in the doorway, looking down into the dark, as Sam hadn't turned the flashlight on yet. It smelled really bad, as if someone had unplugged the freezer down there. Sam asked me if I heard that sound. I shut up and listened. At first I thought I didn't hear anything, but then I realized that I did. It was kind of a low rumbling noise or something like that. I tried to imagine what, in a basement, would make a sound like that. I took a step down onto the first stair leading down to hear better, and the sound revved up suddenly, like a motorcycle speeding up. It was then that I recognized it as an animal noise. An angry animal noise. There, I pointed out the glowing amber eye shine I could see in the basement. I had seen that color of eyes in the night before. Owls have those yellowy-orange eyes at night, or at least one of them that I've seen near our home does. I think it was a barred owl, but don't quote me on that. So I thought we were looking at a growling owl that somehow got down into the basement of Rich Uncle Rich's house. Sam turned the flashlight on and shined it at those glowing eyes. And the next thing I knew, I was having my mind blown. As I was looking at a really big, fur-covered, humanoid man-thing with a kind of a canine head. It squinted its eyes and tried to cover them with paws that looked disturbingly like human hands with claws at the end of each finger and thumb. We were saying there was nothing of value in that basement, but there was a lot of frozen meat into a creature like that werewolf, or dogman, that we were seeing with our own eyes, meat would be far more valuable than the finest gold or diamonds. The beast man grew annoyed at us shining that light at it, and he screamed this sort of a roar at us that made my knees think they were made of rubber. We both ran, panicked and disoriented, banging into walls and doorways as though we had lost our sense of balance and so we were out of that house. I closed the door, but Sam opened it up again, saying that we needed to leave the dogman a way to get out. Just then, there he was, the dogman, charging toward that doorway like he had a bone to pick with us. In fact, he looked annoyed enough to pick each and every one of our bones, believe me. We got in that car, and literally got chased off the grounds by that dogman. That was the end for me of trying to get Rich Uncle Rich to like me. He could have left me a million dollars, and it still wouldn't have made up for the year of my life I got scared out of me when that dogman chased us out of his mansion. You know, life may not always be easy, but it's more valuable than money, and I'm glad that Sam and I were able to get out of there with ours intact. Story 3 Shortcut through Werewolf Cemetery. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I am a businesswoman operating my own small business out of Atlanta, 
Sometimes I need to travel to make presentations or meet clients, and I can find myself in strange places trying to figure out how to get around. My dog man story is one of these kinds of stories. I was in Michigan to give a presentation at an office building in the suburbs north of Detroit. I got myself a cheap as possible hotel to stay in, and it was literally located on the other side of a cemetery. You know, that entire trip was a horror show. But I needed to follow through. I needed to physically be there in person, even if it was beyond my means financially at that moment. I was very stressed out, but focused on presenting myself professionally and remaining courteous no matter how hard things might be for me personally at the time. After my meeting, I walked a few blocks away to a bus stop that I hoped nobody from my client company would see me at, since I couldn't afford our car service. The bus left me all the way on the other side of that creepy old graveyard, and I was going to have to walk all the way around it in my heels in the middle of the night in a sketchy neighborhood. But I could see my hotel on the other side of the cemetery from where I was. I was so tired. And it looked so close. Maybe I could just cut through the cemetery and get to a bed I could crash out on sooner. So I found myself in my best suit, carrying a big bag with my presentation equipment in it, squeezing through the bent old bars of an ancient cemetery fence in Michigan in the middle of the night, like some teenage girl running away from home. I certainly hoped none of my clients would see me doing that. I mean, I still can't even believe I did it. It was like a story about someone else, but it happened to me. It was just so out of character. Every time I try to tell the story, it's like it's happening to me again. And I have to sort of tell it in the present tense, you know? Like, there I am in the cemetery. Here we are in the graveyard. It's cold here. It's dark. And I swear, as soon as I passed over into that place... I heard a dog howl in the distance. I shivered, and then I laughed at myself for it. I was acting scared of old horror movie tropes. It was just someone's dog howling at a cat or the moon. What was I expecting? Werewolves in the old Michigan graveyard? I should have known better than to take this shortcut through the cemetery. Mist swirls around the gravestones as I hurry along, my heart pounding in my chest. Sure, it's just my imagination playing tricks on me, but the hairs on my neck are standing on end. I quicken my pace, my heels clicking on the pavement, trying to shake off this eerie feeling. That's when I hear it. The sound of footsteps crunching on the soft ground off on the side behind me. My mind tells me it's just another person taking the same shortcut as me, but my instincts tell me to run, and I know that I'm not the only one in this graveyard tonight. A low growl rumbles from the darkness, and I realize with a shiver that I'm being followed by a werewolf. Like what? It's a real non-sequitur moment. I'm expecting to see a mugger or a homeless person. Maybe I'll be lucky and it'll just be a security guard asking me what I'm doing there. It might be a scary drug fiend. It might be teenagers out to be crazy. It might be any number of things. But when I looked, what I saw was a werewolf. There is a werewolf following me through the cemetery. Let that sink in. I want to turn and stare at it. But instead... I visualize it in my head. It's hairy. It's unclothed. It's an animal. But it's standing up like a man. The head looks like some kind of caveman version of a dog. Like a prehistoric dog or a proto-dog. In other words, he's a monster. And he's in the cemetery. And he's following me. Now that is impossible. So I decide it must be a furry in a costume. I risk a quick glance behind me, but when I do, he instantly reacts by baring his teeth, curling his lips back, and growling. His eyes are nearly glowing, and they turn redder and redder as he bares his teeth more. He's about to pounce on me, so I look away. I am so screwed. I bolt forward, 
my mind racing, my heart pounding in my chest. I glance over my shoulder, and in the moonlight, I see a flash of fur and teeth. What else was I expecting? It's unmistakably a werewolf. I have no idea how it's even possible, but I know what I'm seeing. I try to outrun it, but my legs are cramping up, trying to run in these heels. I know I'm not going to make it out of here alive. Suddenly, I spot a figure emerging from the mist, commanding and fierce. It's a guy standing there with a handgun, an old guy, and I'm screaming. I mean, now I'm screaming half because of this armed guy, and still half because of the werewolf dogman thing, right? I'm just screaming until there's no air left in my lungs. And then, I'm screaming all over again. So this older guy points his gun down at the ground and starts speaking in calming terms, apologizing for scaring me. He wasn't even a security guard. He was just some guy who thought I was looting the graveyard. Some guy also taking a shortcut through it in the night. I look around and there's no werewolf. It's just gone. And I don't see where he could have gone to that quickly, so it's really weird. This guy is still talking to me. And I start to wonder if he could be the werewolf. Like, could he have changed from the dogman into a human form? But then, where did he get his clothes? Or that handgun? No, he couldn't be the wolfman that I saw. I am so confused. I was probably rude to that guy, but I started walking as fast as I could in those shoes over toward the hotel. I'm going back into past tense now because the story is nearing its end. So when I got back home to Atlanta late the next day, I found that I had secured a deal with those clients, which meant that I was going to have to make a trip out that way a couple of times a year or most years. My business has grown since then and I'm starting to plan for retirement now, which I'm very excited about. Young entrepreneurs, not just women, but young business people in general, will ask me for advice to follow when they're starting out in their business lives. I usually tailor my response to the individual and what I think they personally should remember, as we're all so very unique. But one bit of advice I will gladly give across the board to anyone is this. If you do business in Michigan, don't stay at the motel by the cemetery. He's only just now joined us, but we hope he'll never leave us. Of course, I'm talking about Innocencio de Divas. Please join me in welcoming our newest executive producer, Innocencio de Divas, who joined our PayPal club at peterbernard.com last night and became our newest $7 channel member. That means Innocencio gets to see our secret uncensored stories, of which we make four new ones per month, as well as our over 25 hours of archived uncensored dogman stories, far too wild for this channel. Plus, he gets to know that he's a really cool guy who's helping our channel stay online through yet another strange and difficult period. So you get perks and you get an increased chance to get into heaven later on. Is that a sweetheart deal or what? No, but seriously, here to explain it for real is our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Hank. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or Join our PayPal Subscribers Club at PeterBernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascari. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow.
back for more scary stories.